Effective flight path management is a key factor for safe offshore helicopter operations. Automation technology in aircraft can make a positive difference. Complete understanding by flight crew of how the designers intended automation to be used makes flight path management even safer. And so too does achieving operational standardization. This is where the implementation of flight crew operating manuals can bring tangible safety benefits. They get everyone on the same page and clear as to how to maximize the safety features of each aircraft. Operator experience and operational data clearly support the case for using FCOMs, and key oil and gas industry stakeholders support this too. The aircraft that we're operating today have become more and more complex as time goes by. A um, lot more uh, automated systems, uh, computers and electronic systems that operate uh, along with the flight crew. And the FCOM really pulls together the, the design requirements that they had for the aircraft and how they want that um, technology utilized in the aircraft. And the FCOM puts that all together for the flight crew to be able to maximize the efficiency out of the aircraft. But we wanted to keep it automation centric because that's where our biggest challenges are in terms of accidents was um, the management of the automation and effective use of automation in flight path management. So if pilots have a better understanding of the philosophy and how it works, then you don't have that what's it doing now moment. The FCOM really covers a few gaps that exist today. Most helicopter operators would say, look, we have an RFM, a rotorcraft flight manual. That gives us everything we need, combined with our current standard operating procedures. The problem that they have with that is that the RFM was really designed around certification of the aircraft by the manufacturer at the time they built and designed the aircraft. And it doesn't cover a lot of the operating aspects of what a pilot should do with the automation, how to fly it. So the FCOM is really closing the gap between the design philosophy, what the designer thought at the time, how it would link button pushes with automation output to the pilot in an easy to read format. We want a pilot, whether he's flying for one operator or another, to be flying it in exactly the same way so that when they move between companies, there's no change in the way they operate the equipment, a lot of which is very complex uh, and needs years to get thoroughly professional. There are still going to be different roles and there's some going to be some differences uh, in the way they operate, uh, but having the FCOM as the basis is going to mean that standardisation is much greater. We believe FCOMs are going to be critical because they're going to prevent accidents uh, in the short run. We want our aircraft to be flown uh, in a standardised way and in the way in which the OEM that designed them intended them to be flown. I think that the FCOM uh, was introduced quite a long time in the, in the fixed area and it was definitely a tool to be introduced in the helicopter world as well because actually between what was publishing the, 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 the manufacturer and what was using the operator there was a kind of gap that they have to translate the manufacturer uh, procedure into their own procedures. So I think that the, the FCOM is a good tool in between to get the good guidance and more accurate for the uh, helicopter operator, which is a good thing. The manufacturers have made a lot of um, effort, huge effort over the last two years. And Leonardo have produced FCOMs for the 139, which is now currently in service. The 189 is currently being reviewed by the operators. Airbus have done a great job on the 175, and they have obviously from the 225 where they learned a lot of lessons and they've been able to deploy those in the 175. Sikorsky has done the 76 and the 92, so they both have FCOMs, which exist on their 360 platform. And the good news is that uh, Bell Helicopters are the 5 to five, it's in the pipeline and they've accepted that they're going to run with FCOMs, which is a perfect situation for us because we have all the designers and the development of this air aircraft right at the early stage, so we're very excited by that. One thing to note, um, because it's quite new to this industry, is an FCOM isn't delivered as a finished product. It's going to be an iterative process, probably about a five-year process, of working backward and forward with the manufacturers and the helicopter operators to get the AFCOM in a position that's acceptable to the majority of the operators because parts of it now will work with some operators and some parts won't work with other operators. So we're trying to bring those two bodies together to make sure we're in sync on what a good AFCOM looks like. We'd like to see from an oil company perspective is every day is, is the same thing over and over again. Very repeatable, very high quality, very much you know what we expect and then what our what our passengers in the back expect to, to, to actually be flown to, to, to what, what the experience feels like. 
We've been advocating for FCOMs uh, for quite some time uh, and certainly once they're widely available for the aircraft types we're flying, then the easiest way for us to encourage the use of those is to start putting it in as a contract requirement. I think the industry will move and certainly the ILGP will move towards imp implementing this in some type of requirements, probably the current AMG 590 where, where we're going to say this is how we'd like this to be done and hopefully the operating community will come along with us and say yes we would like to do it that way so that we're all lined up. The fixed wing area they find a very good benefit from that. There is no reason that we can f cannot find a very good uh, a positive uh, use of this in, uh, in the helicopter world for sure. In the past we've had operating manuals that maybe didn't go into the level of detail that we were actually operating the aircraft. So flight crews, uh, operating companies had to figure out the way to optimize it. This way we're taking that guesswork out of it. You know, the original, like I said, the original design team that said this is how we want it to be utilized. Now we can get that full benefit out of the technology. Operators can assist with the development of the AFCOM by getting involved in the HelioShore work group which is led by JJ Gerber from Kuga, Chris Adams from Flight Safety and Pat Attaway from PHI. And they are busy bringing all the operators together to create a single united voice and opinion of what a good FCOM will look like. Implementing an FCOM right now from an operator standpoint is to connect with the manufacturer to make sure you have the latest FCOM, connect with the Helioshore work group. It's then to do a gap analysis of what the FCOM is and what you currently have in your procedures. It's not designed to replace all your procedures. It is a document that is very automation-centric to tell a pilot what the aircraft can and can't do. And that's really going to be the best starting point for any operator who wants to get into the aircraft.